Hello everyone, today I'm going to show you how to use Excel to row reduce a matrix to the echelon form and the row reduce echelon form. Um, so this method is especially useful for students who are first time exposed to linear algebra. Actually, there are a bunch of computational tools out there if you search Google or the internet that you just need to enter your matrix and then within the blink of the eye, you will see the row reduce echelon form. Uh, however, what will you learn after that instant when you get the result? You learn nothing. So I was thinking like um, you may have trouble with computational because there are a lot of numbers to add, subtract, multiply at a time. Um, so I want to help you to get over the computational issue, but also I like to help you understand what you are doing. So that's the purpose for the video today. This is an example that I found from the textbook. So now say I want to row reduce this matrix to just say first echelon form. Then you look at row 1. This is the first non-zero entry on row 1 that we usually call the pivot entry of row 1. Alright, so in order to obtain the echelon form, you need all the entries below it to be zero. So you will have to make changes on row 2. So row 2 becomes row 2 minus row 1. Alright, so first you know that row 1 will stay unchanged. So you copy and paste it. But if you paste it this way, then there will be a mess later on. So I would suggest you to paste the values only. So paste special and choose value. Alright. So that will make sure that every functions you are going to work on the cells will not get transferred somewhere unintentionally. Next, you want to make changes on this entry. So row 2 equal or become row 2 minus row 1. And then you can just drag it along the second line. Then you get 1 minus 0, which is 1, 0 minus 2, which is negative 2, 4 minus 4, which is 0, and 3 minus 0 is 3, 2 minus 1 is 1. So as long as you identify the correct transformation for the row, this method will help you identify all the other entries quickly. In my opinion, it helps you reduce your computational work but it also helps you to understand what you are doing. So now, we want to reduce these to zero, but they are already zero, so we won't need to make any changes on row 2 and row 3 at this current step. So we are going to copy it and paste it below. And as I said before, paste special and choose values only. So right now, we have already finished obtaining uh, all zeros below the first non-zero entry of the first row, we are going to move to the second row. The first non-zero entry of the second row is this number 1, all right? And we want to zero out all the entries below it. So in order to do so, you will have to make changes on row 3. It will have to become row 3 minus row 2, all right? So row 3 minus row 2. Again, row 1 and row 2 will not be changed. So you copy it and paste special. Choose values only. And next, you will want to make changes on row 3. So click the first entry on row 3. That would become, so you hit equal, row 3 above minus row 1, or uh, row 2, sorry. And then you track along the third row, you will have all entries computed. So we have zero out this entry, and this is zero already, so at this step we wouldn't do anything more. So we are going to copy it, and again, right click, and paste special. Alright. 
we have the echelon form. However, if you want to move further and get the reduced echelon form, then the first thing you will want to do is to make all the pivot entry becomes 1. That means row 3 will become row 3 divided by 2. And similarly, you will divide row 4 by 2. So that means row 1 and row 2 will be kept unchanged. Then row 2 or row 3, so you can equal, become row 3, that is here, divided by 2. Then you drag it horizontally. Right. And then you also want to do row 4 divided by 2. So the first entry on row 4 equals to the previous entry on row 4 divided by 2. And then drag it along. And you have successfully made all pivot entries become 1. Next, in order to get the row reduced echelon form, you will have to zero out all the entries above the, the pivot entries. So we are going to move backward instead of using the first row. Now we are going to use the last row and go up above step by step. So this is good, but this has to be zero. That means you will have to make changes on row 3. So row 3 will be changed into in order to make zero here you have to subtract the number two by two times the number one below it all right so row three subtracted by oh yes two times row four and so when you do the computation that means you have to keep the last row leave three rows blank and paste special keep the values only right? otherwise it's going to be a mess trust me all right so then row three minus two row four so this equal row three minus two times row four and then you track it along boom everything has been computed now Next, you will want to zero out this one, but it's already zero, so you are going to just copy the second row. Now, next, this is where we are looking at. We want to zero out the number four, so that means row one will be changed into row one minus four times row four. So here on the first cell of the below table, you hit equal row 1 minus 4 times row 4. Right, and track it. Alright, so this has not yet been in reduced echelon form yet because these entries above the pivot entries they will have to be zero that means row one would become row one minus two times row three all right so here you would hit the call row one minus two times row three there you go and then you will want to make this become zero as well so row two become row row two plus two times row three so here equal row 2 plus 2 times row 3 
ask Excel to do the rest of computations for you. Alright, and then the later rows are good enough, so you just copy them and paste special. Make this become your habit, otherwise that's going to be a mess. Now, all pivot entries are 1. All the entries above the pivot entries are 0. This is row reduced at long form. And thank you for watching.